Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and today we're going to be doing a night scene for our Sea Shack scene. I'll be talking about setting up your scene lights, but also atmospheric lights, and if you like it, making the fish glow. And I'll be briefly explaining how you can attach those lights to different objects to make them move. And I'll very briefly talk about EV and cycles. So hopefully you've got somewhere to around here where you've got some animation going on. It doesn't matter if you haven't. And we're going to be setting up our lights so it looks like nighttime. That's an important thing to remember that when you're setting up a nighttime scene, it's not actually about removing all the lights. It's about getting the right types of light in there so it looks like nighttime. So I'll explain what I mean. At the moment we've got three sun lamps and an HDRI in the background. I'm in rendered view at the moment so we can see the final result. And I'm going to change my timeline to the shader editor down here. I'll change that to world. So I set this up as three point lighting where you have a fill light, a key light and a backlight. And you might want to look up three point lighting. It's a very traditional way of lighting sets. And we're actually going to keep these lights. But first of all, I'm going to kind of remove all the lights and then start adding lights slowly. So I'm just going to turn these all down to zero. So now we've just got the HDRI lighting it and I'll turn that down to zero. So we're completely black. Although my fish have got a slight emission on them, but I'll talk about that a bit later. So the first thing we want to do is think about the background HDRI. Now you can go without an HDRI, but I quite like the lighting effects that it gives. So I'm going to change mine. So I'll go into my HDR files and have a look. Now someone was asking about the difference in file sizes between HDRIs. If you're going for hyper-realistic, then a high resolution HDRI might help you, but there's not a great deal of difference in this particular situation but it does help using proper high dynamic range images because they've got more light information within them. When choosing your HDRI for a night scene, I'm going for a nice dark but bluey colored one. So something like this. In terms of the resolution, I think most of these are 2K and that seems to suit me just fine. But again, if you're going super hyper real, then the bigger the better. So I've chosen that one and I'll turn the strength up just a touch, maybe 0.2. So there's just a little bit of light. Remember, it's not completely making it dark. You've got to imagine there's a moonlight in there as well. So let's go to my three sun lamps. If we look at the direction they're pointing, this one's my backlight and it's coming from the backside. This is a fill light and this is the key light. So we'll start with the backlight and we'll just bring that up to something like 0.1. So can you see it's just offered a tiny bit of light around the place. The next one, I'm going to do 0.2. So that's a fill light. Again, there's not much light. It looks like it's quite dark, but it is offering just that bit of light. Next, my key light, and I'm going to bring this up to one. So it's quite a lot of light really, and I'm going to change it fairly bluey. Somewhere around there, I might bring it up to 1.5 in fact. So already that looks like nighttime. And then we'll start adding in our lamps to really add some atmosphere. So let's do that now. Let's go over to our lamp over here and let's position our lamps first. Now remember I got rid of my timeline. I'm just going to bring up another window here and show my timeline because it's really important that you don't have record still pressed. I've already recorded this once and it all went all over the place because I had this pressed and I was moving them around and they were keyframing everywhere. So be careful, untick record whilst you're doing this. I'm going to have another swinging lamp over here. So I'm going to copy the whole lot of this with Shift D and bring it over to here somewhere. In fact, I'm going to turn snapping on and then I can grab it and actually move it straight to that point. Turn snapping off again and just move it across in the Y. So I've just duplicated this with Shift D and let's just press spacebar and make sure it's still swaying in the wind. Now they're swaying at exactly the same time. So ideally I'd want to go in and change the bones slightly but I'm going to be a bit naughty and just rotate it in the Z axis slightly. So R then Z. And then it will give it that slight bit of difference to the other one. It's not much, but it might just work. And now also I want a couple of lamps up here. So I'm going to select this lamp and duplicate it. Shift D. In fact, I'll turn snapping on first and Shift D and move it up to here. Snapping's not really working for this, is it? There we go. That will do. Turn snapping off again, grab in the z-axis. And can you see how it's all a bit warped? And that's because it's still trying to follow those bones. 
We can remove it from the bones by going to the Object Data tab here, and we can just get rid of those bones. Now we've got a nice lamp with no deformity. And we can shift that into position, somewhere around there. And I'm going to duplicate that, just in top view now, and duplicate it and put it inside the hut, somewhere around there. They're a bit big actually, so I might scale these ones down. You could even model a nice candle on the side here. So there's my lights. Now whilst we're on this object, let's look at its material. Down to the shader editor and into object. And let's just go down to the emission section here. In fact, let's just check on the actual materials. I'll just expand this out. And notice I've got two materials on mine. One is an emission. Although actually, because it was daytime, I just gave it a glass material with the transmission. And one is my metal material here. So it's reflecting a lot of the blue light at the moment. So make sure you're on the emission before you change it. And I'm going to push that right up and give it a nice yellowy color. Somewhere around there. Now it may be that you want these to glow a lot. If you do, then I would suggest, let's pull out my shader a bit more, changing this one to an actual emission. So bringing in an emission like this and bringing the strength up beyond one. That way it will start glowing. But only if you have bloom selected here. So make sure you've got bloom ticked. And it's already starting to look nice, but we need some actual lights in here as well, because these emissions by themselves don't offer any light in Eevee. However, it's worth saying that if you go across to Cycles, they do offer a bit. Let's quickly go back to Eevee, and let's zoom in on one of our lamps. So I'm going to move my cursor to the lamp, so it's right in the middle. I'm going to press Shift S, which brings up the cursor menu, and I can say Cursor to Selected. And you can see our 3D cursor is right in the middle there now, so I can add my light right in the center. Shift A to add, light, point light. Let's go to the lighting settings down here. Let's bring the radius up just a touch, so we can see it, just there. And let's bring the power right up. Now this seems strange. I'm taking it right up to a thousand, and I'm going to give it a nice yellowy color. And you're probably saying, well, candles can't possibly manage that. But remember, we're faking light. They do exactly the same thing on film sets. They get big, huge lights and they don't actually light scenes with real candles. They put candles in shot, and then they have a big, huge light in the background somewhere, and maybe put something in front of it to make it flicker. So don't worry too much about these numbers. You're just trying to make it look good. If you're going for hyper-realistic scenes, then you need to take notice of these. So let's zoom out a bit and see the effects that's having. It's interesting that when I move around, it flickers, which is quite nice. You can animate the power with this little button here, and that will animate the light so it flickers if you like. So that's having a nice effect. I'm going to turn it up even more to 1,500. I think we're getting there. 2,000 just to check. Actually, 2,000 looks great. Now there is one thing you'll need to check. Under shadows, there is a clipping start. Now I have got this wrong in the past. I thought it was the radius that made a difference in terms of the clipping, so let's just zoom in quickly. If your clipping's too low, it might be inside the lamp and not shining out. So you may need to turn this clipping up so that it sits outside your lamp. In this case, I think it can shine through the glass, so I think we're okay. And that's the effect through the glass. But do just play with that if you have any problems with your light. You might also want to change your softness and bring it down quite a bit, so they're quite hard shadows. Now we want to duplicate that light onto our other lamps. The best way is actually to press Alt-D this time, so Alt-D for linked duplicates. I'll turn snapping on first, and I'll change it to volume. Alt-D, let's move it into this lamp here. And it hasn't moved to that one. Let's press G to grab. Oh, I didn't actually press snapping on. There we go. Try that again. I changed it to volume, but didn't actually turn it on. And now it's right in the middle of that lamp, and that looks great. Alt-D once again to this lamp. And Alt-D once again to this lamp. I'm pressing Alt-D so that I only need to change one lamp, and then it will change them all. So you may feel at this point that 2000 is too much. Now you've got all your lamps in, perhaps 1500. But I think already that's looking really nice and atmospheric. The only issue you're going to get if you press Alt-D is that animating them, they'll all flicker at the same time and you might not want that. The only other thing you might want is your light swinging with your lamp. It's fairly awkward, but you'll need to attach your light to an empty and then the empty to one of these bones. That's the way I know how to do it. There probably are easier ways. 
I'm not going to do that here, but I am going to do it for the fish. So let's go and hide the C with H. I'm going to make one of my fish glowing. So click on the fish. I'm going to give this fish a new texture. So new material. And turn the emission up. And make it bright orange or ready colored like this. Perhaps a bit more orange. About there. Shift right click. And shift A to add a point light. Let's go to the lighting settings again. Change the color to an orangey color. Turn the power up. Let's go to 500. Put the clipping up, make sure that's beyond the fish. And that time it did make a difference if you see the clipping because it's one side of the fish at the moment, but that's fine. And now what I want to do, I'll turn the radius up a little bit more. I want to move this light with this fish. So as I was explaining before, I attach this light to this empty. So select the light first, select the empty second, and control P, object. Now when I animate, the light moves with the fish. Now I can change the settings of this light a bit. Up to a thousand, see what that looks like. Bring back my C, and that looks great fun. So you can do the same thing for the lamps up here. The very last thing I'll mention is that you might want to go across and render in cycles. And the great thing is that all the light settings do transfer across really well. But what you might find is that it's very grainy. Your samples is basically your quality. So if I turn the viewport samples up, you can see the quality changing slowly with this value over here. Cycles does give a nice realistic result as it calculates all those light bounces. So that's something you might like. If noise is still a problem, then you can go to the scene setting here and down to denoising, and that will denoise in your render. And I think they've made some big advancements in denoising just recently. So you may want to play with Blender 2.81 releases. I think I'll stick to Eevee, as I'm quite pleased with the results we're getting. So there we have it, a nighttime scene. Now for the animation and exporting, I'm having lots of difficulties trying to get the exported animations across into different programs. So I'm doing some experimentation. So that may be a little while in coming. The biggest difficulties are the animations on circles and displacements. So if you know much about that, you can comment below or contact me. I'd greatly appreciate the help. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.